Listen to the greatest lecture ever that the president of Burkina Faso, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, delivered to African students at the Mendeleev University in Moscow on the Saturday of May 10, 2025. It is a lecture in which he poured out his rich and deep knowledge in chemistry, but advised the students not to be theorists like him, a theorist who wasn't exposed to practicals when he was a student, but rather be more practical and return home to apply what they learned by manufacturing things like vehicles, explosives, bombs, essential chemicals, steel, armor and everything that's needed to grow an economy and strengthen a country's defense. Thank you very much, comrades, and good morning to all. It is a real pleasure to be here with you this morning to commune with you and also to exchange on certain subjects, I would say, of a scientific nature, which interest us greatly. I'm present here on the occasion of the fourth anniversary of the victory over Nazism. I think that we left yesterday for the parade, and before that, on the day before, we also participated in certain cultural events. But from all of this, I would say that we have learned many lessons which must lead us to think more and remotivate ourselves to relaunch the African machine. The Nazism that we believe or believe to have disappeared is resurfacing. The same thing as imperialism, colonialism, which has resurfaced in another form and which continues to cope populations throughout the world. And today, many people are fighting for their survival, for their sovereignty, to live in peace. And the Sahel is part of this zone where imperialism is manifesting itself in a very violent way. And with everything we are experiencing, I hope that we can honor the memory of all this, all these fighters who gave themselves body and soul and who went before us in this fight against imperialism, against neocolonialism. I ask you to observe a minute of silence. Thank you. This morning, we are in a rather unusual setting, which is a scientific university where many ES students are present to gain knowledge. And we wanted to be there to encourage you and also pass on some messages to you in the pursuit of knowledge. We will work to increase the number of students here. But I also spoke with them. We hope that these universities, such as this chemistry university and the radio technology university, can be duplicated in the country and train more students, and that we can cooperate and that they send us instructors on site to have large laboratories and large universities. Our cooperation with Russia will be based more on education and the transfer of knowledge. It will not be a cooperation where we will be there asking for support, asking for support on the financial side, on the economic side, and so on. We are not here for that. We are here to provide more knowledge. We are here to provide more knowledge, and knowledge is much more scientific. And you here in this scientific university, I admire you greatly because normally you should learn and practice science, chemistry, and radio technology. This is what we need today to develop. I will give you a few examples during my speech to support my basic thinking. 
Here we are at Mendeleev University, everyone has studied Mendeleev, including those who have completed scientific studies. And I'll give you a little anecdote. During my school career, there were people who didn't like certain things and who couldn't learn certain things. So when they couldn't do it, we nicknamed them perhaps after the scientist who invented the thing. For example, we had people called Pavlov, we had people called Mendeleev as well. The one we called Mendeleev, for example, once asked himself the question, why did Mendeleev create this table? It's for us to create pictures. You see, he has to work on a table, but he doesn't know why he has to work on tables. Which means that if he doesn't practice, he doesn't know the usefulness of our students' periodic table. That's why I say in this sense cooperation is very important so that we can practice. It's the same thing as the chemical equations that we've spent time balancing since, I would say, high school. We are very strong when on paper we are told to balance a chemical equation, we do it. When in thermodynamics, we are told to calculate the standard in Tashipaya formation of a body, and we do it. But practically, what do we do? Have I ever been asked, for example, to illustrate a nucleus, talking about hydrogen to tell me that if we remove an electron, what does it give? Or when we add an electron, what does it give? I did not have this practical illustration. Hydrochloric acid, since high school we have made the chemical reactions on paper with it, but I have never handled hydrochloric acid. And to do a practical reaction is to tell you that practice is very important. And these laboratories to make me do the practice, we lack it at the level of our countries. And you must not be these theorists that I am. That's why we want to replicate this kind of university here so that our young people who are trained in scientific subjects help with practical matters and are not just theoreticians. Many things around us are the chemistry of materials. And the world even began with that. This painting that a student created, I tell myself that all of science is based on that. But it's practice that allows you to leave this state of being a theoretician and create something tangible that can be useful to society. And that contributes a lot to the economy of our countries without you knowing it. I'll give you a few examples. You see, we import a lot of iron, for example, from all over the world. And what we call galvanized iron. And you, chemists here, know very well that it's just an electrolysis reaction. How can we not do it locally here? We have to pay for it. Have it galvanized in China or in Europe, all over the world. For example, we are at war, we pay for equipment, we pay for ammunition, weapons, and everything. And when I take ammunition, explosives, and everything, Mali produces cotton, Burkina Faso produces cotton, Niger produces cotton. But you know very well that it is the cellulose from cotton that is processed to make gunpowder and explosives. Why can't we do it? Because we don't have practical chemistry. Even for the armor of vehicles, yesterday I saw on Red Square many vehicles parade from the T-34 to modern vehicles. Indeed, armor has evolved. What is armor? It is a model of steel, and it is through chemistry that people were able to understand that by adding such a dosage of carbon offered and so on, that we can create a particular steel. It is practice. We know how to do chemical equations. We know very well that if we add such a dosage of carbon offered it gives us steel and so on. But practically, can we create the armor? Yet we are at war and it is chemistry that allows us to do it too. In the same vein, you see all the types of missiles that the Bailiff Federation can develop and the latest one is what makes the whole world tremble. Who wouldn't like to have it, but just the fuel for everything that is a missile, it's chemistry. Can we practically know how to create this fuel and try to create an engine to propel a rocket or a missile? There are so many examples that we cannot finish citing, but this is to tell you that you are lucky to be here. I would say, at the origin of chemistry and mathematics, because in Russia, there were scientists in these fields whether it be physics, chemistry, mathematics but as the representative said, history has been truncated and we are made to understand that the Russians are not strong in certain fields.
ne, ne sont pas forts dans certains domaines. Ce sont les autres qui ont écrit l'histoire. It was others who wrote history. They claim to be strong in everything. But I think that today history shows us that everything is false. There are indeed scholars. The origin is here the proof who created this table, which summarizes the Russian subject. So take advantage of learning, learn in a practical way so that it serves our countries. When a country is weak, it is doomed to disappear in this world of predation. We must be strong. And today, nuclear countries are strong. They never lose a war. But the nuclear bomb, you've all gone atomic, that's for sure. You're told it's a turd that hits a nucleus, which splits and releases energy. We know the equation, but how do you enrich it, even to change the isotope? How to enrich it? How to do it practically? So take advantage of it because we need you to develop our countries. Homeland or death, we will win. Homeland or death, we will win. We have young talents in the country, inventors, scientists too, who manage to create certain things, but they often lack the mathematical knowledge to improve and update and to be able to have a unique formula for what they do. And I think that wanting to duplicate these universities in Burkina Faso and allow there to be everything necessary for young people to learn is a very good thing and we will therefore continue to intensify cooperation with Russia especially in the framework of scientific deadlines for education and that is the basis of development. And now perhaps I will give you some advice and that should guide you here. And I think that it is said that Africa is the cradle of humanity, but Africa has a lot of catching up to do. It is not impossible, it is quite possible. You live here, you see like me everything you see. And it's possible here too. We have to believe, we have to work. And I urge you to be model citizens here, to respect the rules and laws of the country that welcomes you, to be models of integrity, to be united, to be models of Africans that we want to see outside. The discipline and order that you see here, you must be able to show more. So be united, learn, learn well and be essential. We need you and we hope that very soon you will come and create what we dream of for other generations and teach these generations what you have learned so that they will be better than you. Everyone wants future generations to be better than us. And I am counting on you to learn and pass on knowledge. In any case, stay focused. Imperialism continues its actions, but divide and conquer must not work with us again. You must have understood everything, stay focused, the fight continues and the fight will always continue until the final victory. Homeland or death, we will win. Thank you very much.